Hey, 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 YouTube fam. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I pray that each of you are having a blessed and safe day. All is well with you. Everything is going great. And even if it's not, you're watching this video under the sound of my voice. Guess what? You have made it to a brand new day, evening, night, wherever you are in the world. You have made it. All right. If this is your first time tuning into my YouTube channel, my name is Candice e. Brown. I'm a certified life coach. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm an author as well as a YouTuber and a podcaster. <laughs> I am also a mother of two beautiful and wonderful children. And what I do, I do mindset coaching for women, helping them take the mindsets from rags to riches, baby, okay? Because every woman is a queen out here. All right, so ladies, if you need help with mindset coaching, self-confidence coaching, self-love, please do not hesitate to hit me up on my website, www.mindsetchange21.com. Or if you have any questions, any concerns, shoot me an email, contact at mindsetchange21.com. Because if you've been watching my channel, what I tell y'all, y'all are some queens, okay? That's your birthright, you royalty. All right, don't let nobody tell you different. I don't care what you do for a living. It don't matter about your past. Don't matter about the circumstances or situations that you're going through. None of that stuff matters, baby. You a queen out here in these streets. I don't care what nobody told you. I don't care what your mama told you, your sister, your daddy, your auntie, cousin. They might say, hey, how you a queen? You ain't no queen. Baby, you were born a queen. You understand what I'm saying? Before you even got down here, baby, you was a queen. You understand what I'm saying? You are a queen. So I need all my ladies to fix your crown because sometimes life happens and our crowns might get a little crooked because we had to do a little work. But fix your fix your crown today. OK. And there are some of you have never even picked up your crown. Sis, what you waiting on? What you waiting on? Don't, don't be talking about I'm waiting on to get my life right or I'm waiting on to get myself together. Pick that crown up today. Pick it up. Pick up that crown. Put it on top of your head, baby. Hold your head up high and walk like the fearless, bold queen that you were born to be. All right. All right. So I know it's been a few days since I've been on here. Y'all forgive me. Y'all forgive me. I've been trying to do a few things different with my business. Got it up and running got it going finna do some things so that's requiring some extra time so y'all forgive me but i'm gonna slide ahead and get y'all a video before i have to get on the next thing or whatever and today i want to talk about four ways you can create self-love four ways you can create self-love first of all let's talk about what is self-love what is self-love okay and y'all made me see me looking down i wrote me some notes I, I like to take notes and stuff i like to study stuff so i could come up here and tell y'all the correct stuff and everything like that so what is self-love self-love is just really loving yourself Loving you, love of self, regard of one's own happiness or advantage. Loving you, putting you first, okay. And y'all know we, we as women, we are some um, what's the word I want to say? We're nurturers. We are natural nurturers, and we have to, we have to love and nourish. You know that that's who we are. And we often put ourselves on the back burner for other people, for our kids, for our jobs. OK, um, for our loved ones, no matter who it is, we, we always thinking about everybody else and we put ourselves on the back burner. And a lot of times when we put ourselves on the back burner, what happens? We get burnt out. We get frustrated. We get depressed. We get upset. We get to crying because we are not taking care of ourselves. OK, I find this to be so true because I did this for so long. I was taking care of everybody else's business, taking care of everybody else, but wasn't taking care of Candace. OK, and when you don't take care of yourself, it shows. OK, it shows you got to take care of you first. OK, so I'm going to talk about four ways. Create self-love. The first thing I'm going to talk about three scriptures. OK, three scriptures in the Bible. And if you have your Bibles, you can go to it. You can reference to it. But I'm going to tell you the first verse, first two verses, excuse me. They're coming from Psalm 27, 9 and 10. God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Even when your mama and daddy leave you, God said he'll be right there with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's the first promise. That's one of the promises. There are so many promises in the Bible. And I thought about doing like a series of the promises of God. I'm still thinking on that, but I'm thinking I'm going to do like a, a, a video and talk about a lot of the promises that God, but this is one of the promises that God has said to us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us no matter what. 
No matter what. No, ma no matter whether you serve him or not, he's still going to be right there. No matter if you don't pray him a prayer, you don't say hallelujah, tell him thank you in the morning when you get up. No matter if you don't pay your tithe and stuff, God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's what makes him so awesome, y'all. There are two verses right there. God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you even when your mom and daddy. Because let me tell you something, mom and daddy going to get frustrated with you. Come on, somebody, let's talk real today. Mom and daddy going to get frustrated with you at times. Mom and daddy might tell you no. Mom and daddy might say, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of dealing with this. And I'm sick of dealing with you and your mess. And I'm tired of doing this for you. And I'm tired of bailing you out. And I'm tired of praying for you. And I'm tired. Of, I'm telling you because people, we human at the end of the day and we get tired. We get tired, but God don't never get tired. God don't, he don't get tired of uh, uh, doing, now, I'm going to tell you this right here. I'm going to take that back. Now, let me tell you what he do do. It's called mercy and grace. And people tend to get that mercy and grace and they take it and they abuse it. How I know, how, he's like, Candace, how can you take and abuse mercy and grace? You can you can, you, you can take mercy and grace and abuse it because this is how you do. And I got this from Dr. Miles Monroe. And this is how it was explained. See, we go out there and sin. We go out there, we go out there and sin. And the first thing we'll say, well, God knows my heart. Lord, forgive me. God, grace and mercy going to carry me through. And we use that as an excuse to go out there and sin. That ain't what that for. That's not what that, that's for. God didn't intend for you to keep going out there and sinning and slapping him in his face. Because I'm going to tell you something going to come to a point. And people don't believe this. And grace and mercy run out. It runs out. Oh God, grace and mercy don't never run out. It run out if you keep going out there doing the same thing you're doing. You know you're doing wrong. You know you're sinning against God. You already know this. You know right from wrong. You know the word. You you know the word. You know this word. You know it. Some of, some of them, you know, know it from the, like the back of their hand. They can tell you a scripture. But what the problem is, you keep seeing it. You keep doing it. So why are you continuing to sin? Why are you continuing to do what you do? Come on, somebody. Sorry about that, guys. But what I was saying was, we as people, we use that is an excuse to go out there and sin and do what we want to do. And that ain't what God intends for you to do. He is just like, it's just like Mary in the Bible. They was finna get ready to stone her. And God and Jesus saved her. He said, all right, y'all say stone her. But I, wanna, I want the one to stone her be the first to cast a stone without no sin. I want the first one that want to cast a stone they ain't, did, they ain't did no sin. No sin at all. No sin. They ain't did no sin. Couldn't nobody cast no stone because everybody had no sin. So they, everybody had to drop their stones. And what did he look down at her? He saved her. He said, now, your sin's forgiven. You been forgiven. Now go and sin no more. That's the same thing he tell us. You forgiven? I done forgave you of your sins. Now go and sin no more. That don't mean, oh, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. And then you back over there in the same mess. No, no. That's what God get tired of. Now he gets sick and tired of that. And the thing is, his grace and mercy run out with that. Because at the end of the day, he know what you going to do. He created you. He made you. He know what your next move going to do. And a lot of people... I feel like a lot of people don't want to come to this side because you feel like you got to be perfect. God know you ain't perfect. You ain't got to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. All you got to come as you are. That means come with your sin. That means come with your shortcomings. That means come up toward from the floor in your heart. That means come to him just like that because God want all that smoke. He want all the smoke, baby. He can handle the smoke. You can't handle the smoke, but God can handle all the smoke, baby. He want all the smoke. He want every sin, every shortcoming, everything. He want it all. He want cast your cares upon him, for he cares about you. Cast all your cares upon God. Give it to him. It belongs to him. It don't belong to you. That's why a lot of us are so sick now, because we trying to tote a load that we ain't even equipped to tote. You sitting over there carrying all that hatred and jealousy in your heart, unforgiveness, and, and just you just toting it all. 
and you're not equipped to tote that. God didn't design us to tote on that. That's what creates a disease. Because we sitting around here told stuff we ain't equipped to tote. God did not design our bodies to tote that kind of stuff around. Get rid of it. Empty. How do I empty canis? Give it to God. Give it to him. Release it. Give it to him. What he said, cast your cares upon me because I care about you. Take my yoke for my yoke is light. God is saying, give me the heavy load. Give me the heavy bird. Give it to me. Give it to me. I can handle that. That's, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to lighten your load. Whoo, Jesus, I thank you. Come on now. Cause it, come, come, whoo, come on. Because sometimes it gets heavy. It gets too heavy to carry. Weigh in on your mind. Then when it weigh on in your mind, it weigh on your body. And you begin to look different. You don't look like yourself no more. Because you carrying all that unnecessary weight. You carrying all that unnecessary weight in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. And you just toting around and now it's just drying you up like a prune. Your skin changing. Your eyes, you just don't even look the same. And people like, are you okay? You're like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, you ain't. You sit up here told right unnecessary way. You ain't got no business. Give it to the father. He's well able. He's well able to handle it. Give it to him. And I promise you, you'll feel better. Woo, I had to get that out, y'all. Y'all forgive me. But anyway, let's go on to the next thing. But I have to let God do what he do best, baby. I just have to let the Holy Spirit take over. All right. So the next um scripture, there's another scripture, Matthew 22, verses 35 through 40. And I'm going to read this one. And this right here talks about the commandment. And I'm going to start at 37, y'all. Y'all can start back at um 35, but you really can start from 37 to 40. I'm going to say 37 to 40. And it reads, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. I'm going to read 37. It says, they said, what is the greatest commandment? It says, love. It said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. That's self-love, y'all. How is that self-love? When you loving you, you loving God. How awesome is that? When you start loving you first, love you first, that's when you're loving God first. God wants you to love you first so you can love him. You and him are one. Y'all connected. Y'all together. Y'all together. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That means he always right there with you. So when you love you first, you loving God first. That's self-love. Love you first so you loving God first. And people, oh, that ain't what that means. Yes, it is. See, you, we can't read the Bible from a carnal mind. You got to read from a spiritual mind. And the reality is, if you love you first, you're going to love God first. You and him are one. Y'all connected. Y'all together. Because he'll never leave you. He right there. He ain't going nowhere. He's still right there. He a gentleman. And what he say? I knock at the door. There, I stand there and knock. If you open the door, I come in and sit with you. Come on, somebody. But how many of us know that old ugly devil? He ain't going to knock at your door. He going to bust the door right in. I just got through talking to my sister right there. I wish I could draw. I would draw a picture. But I want you to picture this in your mind. I want you to picture your house in your mind. And your house is your body. Okay. We're going to say the house represents the body. This is the body. It represents a house. Okay. And God is standing right there at the door knocking. But he ain't never entered because he is a gentleman. He don't barge in on you. He don't invade your privacy. He don't do that. He just stand there and knock and he wait patiently and quietly. But let me tell you about the enemy. The enemy go in there and he kick the door down. He break into your house and he just have a field day with you. You done let the enemy, the enemy is in. God standing out there knocking but the enemy done entered in. And oh, he just having a party. He just tearing up your house. He tearing up your curtains. He tearing up your leather chair. Your marble flow. Tearing up your stairs. Your kitchen. Oh, your kitchen was clean, but baby, it's in a dog mess. Like just somebody just came and just stole it. He just stealing. Stole all your valuables. Stole your, your money, your jewelry, your TVs. Come on, somebody. 
All that valuable stuff, he in there, just, he a thief, he just like a thief, he come to kill, steal, and destroy, and he just stealing, he just taking everything, yeah, I <laughs> got her now, yeah, I'm stealing, but you let him in the door, you let him kick down your door, and you let him in, but God still right there just knocking, because you ain't never said come in, so now the enemy done took all your stuff, and now you imagine you looking, you ain't got nothing, you crying. You crying, oh, God, help me. Uh. You crying now because you ain't let God in to begin with. Then you open the door and you let God in. Say, God, please come on in. Then God, he step on in. But you know what I love about God? God take all that stuff that was stole from you. And he just, just like he just take his hands. And he make it better than ever. He take what the enemy did to you. He use it for your good. And he just do like this right here. Before you know it, you got a brand new house like you ain't never had before, baby. And it's sharp and then the marble flow, they ain't never sharp shining. And you don't know what you've been trying to shine them up. But when God put that touch to it, put his, whoo, when he touch it, you can see yourself in the reflection in the flow. It's like you standing on glass. Okay, he done took your kitchen and made a brand new kitchen. You, that kitchen ain't never looked like that before. You understand what I'm saying? So you let God sit in there sit with you. Now I don't think the enemy ain't gonna ain't heard about you got no new stuff. He trying to, yeah, I'm a dag on it. <sighs> he get frustrated. So then he come back over there and he finna kick the door down in. Before he kicked God said, uh-uh, you can't come up in here. You know better. Bye. And so and God don't even have to say a word. God just sit there and look at the door like this. And he's I'm I'm finna go. I'm finna go. God said, mm-hmm. That's what I thought. But you let God answer your door. You let God fight your battles. You let God handle all the heavy do the you let God handle all the heavy work. You ain't got no business doing it. All you gotta do is sit back, kick back, and relax. Cause if you go to the door trying to answer it, what the enemy gonna do? Knock you down, come right back in there and try to steal your stuff again. I want y'all to get this in your get this in your mind. Get it in your heart. Open the door for the Lord. Open the door and let God came in because the enemy already done took and stole from you. But God done gave you the okay in this season. I said this on the podcast earlier this morning. He done gave you the okay to go back and snatch your stuff. It's snatching season. Go get your stuff back. It's yours. Go get it back. He done gave you the okay. Some of us been robbed of our happiness, our joy, peace. Some of us ain't got no joy in our life because the enemy done stole it. But go get your joy back. God done equip you. You fully equipped to go get your stuff back. God got you. He ready. Are you ready? All right. All right. Well, let me get on with this, y'all. He's awesome. Number two, spend an hour a day just loving on you. Just spend an hour a day just loving on you. Get up and look in the mirror and tell yourself how much you love yourself. Oh, I just love the way I look. I'm beautiful. I'm smart. Talk, saying those affirmations. Get you some affirmations all about you. Okay? Get in the mirror. We, I know we did a 30-day challenge. I think this was last year we did it. When you get out the shower, just get in the mirror and just, and that, and it's like that same thing that you conscious about, that you self-conscious about. I'm, like, I'm self-conscious about my stomach. Tell your stomach how much you love your stomach and your thighs and your legs. This this part of self-love. Tell God that you thankful, thankful for your stomach and thighs. It might be big, but that's okay. Be thankful for it. Be thankful for it. Say, oh, I love my stomach. I love my arms. I love my thighs. I love my eyes. Just do a self-reflection. Just tell yourself how much you love yourself. Respect yourself at all times. Don't let nobody walk all over you. And treat you like a doormat. No. Respect yourself at all times. Don't allow no disrespect. You don't have to be nasty. But you let people know. I don't tolerate disrespect. I didn't holler at you. Don't you holler at me. And they continue to holler. And like they ain't got no sense. Walk off. You can't just walk off from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let that, let that demon run rapid like he running and you just remove yourself from the situation say oh no i rebuke that in the name of jesus and you going about your business you going about your business okay also hold yourself accountable hold yourself accountable to things and if you have to get a, a accountability partner 
Get you somebody that you can trust. Get a life coach that's going to hold you accountable, especially when it comes to goal setting. Let's say you set a goal, say, okay, in the next 30 days, I want to uh, start doing a, a, a YouTube, doing my YouTube channel, and I want to start posting on my YouTube channel. Hold yourself to that. Do it. And have you somebody that's going to stay on you? Hey, did you post today on YouTube? No, girl. Okay, girl, what you waiting on? Get that, get, get, that, get that video out. Get that video out. Get that podcast out. Start on that business. Get somebody that's going to hold you accountable. Another thing I want you to do also is um, create a self-care treatment plan. And what I mean by this creating a self-care treatment plan Spend 30 minutes something you love doing, positive things. Now, y'all, spend 30 days with watching one of these videos. Um, whether it can be journaling, writing your affirmations, writing the perfect day. Um, as well as, um, I want you to, what is something? Oh, go to, the, you know, go get your nails done. Do something for yourself as well, too, now, y'all. Go get your nails done. Go out to eat. Go buy your shirt, outfit, something like that. Do something to that nature. Spend 30 minutes. Now, you don't have to spend money every day. But um, if it's 30 minutes of, of reading um, a book that's going to pour into you something positive, spend 30 minutes a day doing something that you love. Also, celebrate your wins. Celebrate your wins. I don't care how big, how small they are. Celebrate your wins. Okay? A win could be just like, oh, great. I, I started my podcast. That's a win. I started my YouTube channel. That's a win. Or I didn't go off on my boss today. That's a win. Okay? I didn't fuss and argue with nobody today at work. That's a win. Even though they're small, celebrate them anyway. Celebrate them anyway. Celebrate your wins. Celebrate no matter how big or small. Um, celebrate your wins. And this also builds self-confidence to make you want to do more good things. All right. Also, um, let's see. Ask formations. This is something that's new to me. And this is something I start doing. Instead of saying, I know I had said a few minutes ago with the self-care um Get in the mirror, I'm beautiful and stuff, but get into the mirror and let's switch it around a little bit. You can say I'm beautiful, but then come with a question, why am I so beautiful? Like, I'm beautiful, but why am I so beautiful? Okay? Or you can go like, I know I'm a genius, but why am I so smart? Like, I know I'm already the richest person in the world, but why am I rich? Why am I wealthy? Why am I healthy? Okay, and I promise you, it just does something to you. It's like it'll st you'll start attracting. You'll start attracting the the wealth that you want. You'll start attracting the people that you want to attract in your life. Oh, this is another one I wrote, y'all. Why is my body in perfect shape? That means my body going to get into shape. <laughs> but I just this tweak this to how you have to be tweaked it to. I love to say, why is my skin so soft like cotton or my skin? Why is my skin so radiant like the sun? Okay. And it's just, you're going to attract people and people going to tell you, oh, you're so beautiful. Your skin is just radiant like the sun. What you got going on? You be like, hmm, yes. Yeah, y'all. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It works. It works. But I just want to come on here real quick and share some ways of creating self-love. I know I was here now, but I was staying on subject. But I have to let God do what he do, y'all. But I want y'all to love yourself. Love yourself. This has been um, a big thing, especially with women. We stop loving ourselves. We stop caring about ourselves. We just let ourselves go. And it be... Due to um past relationships, past trauma we had going on. It just, it be a various number of things. But I just came to encourage all my queens, love yourself. Put yourself first. Let's start thinking about you. I know you, you, listen, you got to be here to take care of them babies. If you don't take care of you, then what? Nobody else ain't going to take care of you. 
you got to be here for your, if you got children, think about your children. You got to take care of you so you can take care of them. If you don't have kids, if you just by yourself, still love yourself. There's nobody going to take care of you like you. Okay, take care of you. See about yourself. Stop putting yourself on the back burner. You ain't no doormat. You ain't no back burner woman. You ain't no bad lady. <laughs> okay? You ain't the cleanup woman neither. And you ain't the rebound girl. You ain't the weekend girl. You a whole queen out here in these streets. And a queen, she take care of herself at all times. So take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Get, do this self-care. Re, replay this video as many times as you need to to get those ways to create self-love for yourself. Take care of you. All right? Y'all have a blessed, wonderful, and prosperous day. This has been Candice D. Bryan, your certified life coach, your motivational speaker. I will check in with you guys next time.